Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Good to see you again. And I have a question for you, Art Kirsch. Yeah, me? And that is about, yeah, yeah. it's about your favorite sport. It's not a sport. Uh, practice, whatever it is, hobby, uh, Tai Chi. You, yeah. you have been doing Tai Chi through a local community college, and they call it the Emeritus Institute. It's all for seniors. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah, so actually I've been practicing for 10 years and I started in the, uh, uh, the, the normal class structure, which is just open to anybody, all the kids who are using it for uh, phys ed and things like that uh, along the way. And then uh, when I hit, uh, well, I, or, I was already 50 when I started, but uh, when our uh, instructor retired and, and moved over to something called a uh, uh, lifelong learning, in, in our case, we called the Emeritus Program. I started taking it there about, uh, I'd say, six years ago. And I'm actually currently taking, because we're doing it online uh, during the pandemic, I'm taking seven classes a week of various wow. kinds of Tai Chi. It's really terrific. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful that the local community college can do that? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, this is being done all over the country, not with just Tai Chi, but with all sorts of uh, uh, extended, continuing, lifelong learning. And just as, as chance would have it, uh, I think we have the fellow who directs the Emeritus Program at Saddleback College with us now. Let me check. What a surprise. Dan <laughs> Prenale, how Good are morning, you, Dan? Arby. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for the invite. And surprise, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look good with uh, half the logo sticking into your ear on the side. <laughs> but the important thing is we can see your name under you. Dan, what's Thank your you. official title? Yeah, my official title at Saddleback College is the Assistant Dean of the Division of Extended Learning and Director of the Saddleback College Emeritus Institute. So I wear two hats uh, simultaneously. Okay. Right. And, also, and extended, uh, I'm sorry, time. extended learning is the the larger program that includes the Emeritus Institute program. Okay. That's correct. Saddleback College, like many of the California community colleges, have a division or a department typically called extended learning or continuing education, uh, which is the more synonymous common name nationally for programs for uh, lifelong learners who may be returning or looking to the community college to continue their learning outside of transfer courses. So you, sure. you, not only, you not only have been doing this for about, about 10 or 15 years, uh, specializing in this lifelong learning, but you're actually uh, taking a, a doctoral program uh, that takes you a little bit deeper into the same subject matter, aren't you? That's correct. Yes, I will be starting at San Diego State University this coming fall 2021, specifically focused on educational leadership in the community college setting. Uh, I'm quite excited about this next step in my journey and the, the, the option now to take and apply those years of experience in higher ed and specifically focus those into community college leadership um, I'm really excited about. It'll be a great opportunity. Three-year program, so hopefully in 2024, uh, it'll have a doctor up there on the screen when we talk. <laughs> well, great. And I'll, Dr. Dan, that'll be great. I'm going to start yeah. practicing with uh, adding uh, letters to the uh, title uh, under your name. <laughs> but um, uh, cutting to the chase uh, for a moment, we're seeing uh, throughout the country and internationally as well. And uh, well, you have a very robust program at Saddleback College. Can you tell us in general uh, what kind of programs might be available throughout the United States? Yeah, absolutely. So the, old, the, the population of older adults is growing throughout the nation. Um, that is uh, you know, census-based and fairly clear in terms of research. And as many states um, recognize that a, an engaged older adult senior population means typically more civic activity 
and perhaps less reliance on social services in some cases, there is a movement, um, even mostly recently, on engaging the older adult, the lifelong learner, uh, in, in further education. Um, as I said, community, uh, community education, continuing education, extended learning programs are, national, are, are nationally represented in many uh, community colleges and in some four-year universities. Um, here in California, we have um, four-year universities like UCLA having their extension programs. Um, and that is also one of many of the names by which these types of programs are offered. In the California community college system and others, um, much lifelong learning is fee-based. However, um, across the nation, there are more schools popping up that are providing tuition-free, uh, no-cost lifelong learning programs specifically for seniors. Well, Dan, uh, uh, it's been a number of years, but my wife and I took a real estate course at Saddleback, um, mm -hmm. and it was fee-based. It was uh, probably part of the extended learning. It wasn't uh, necessarily for seniors, although there was a lot of white hair <laughs> in the audience. Um, and so I'm familiar with that. And I have to tell you that, uh, you know, we would get the catalog in the mail uh, every fall or summer uh, with extended learning courses and things listed. And I was so impressed. There's so many things. They're skill-based, they're career-based, they're hobby-based, you know. Uh, uh, it, it, so many offerings. I was really, really impressed with Saddleback in, continue, uh, in, in mm -hmm. particular. Um, but I didn't realize until Art mentioned his um, Taiji that there was a specific program division, whatever you call it, called the Emeritus Institute, just for seniors. So what kinds of programs go into that? What kinds of courses can you take in the Emeritus Institute? Yeah, so Saddleback College has invested its financial resources into senior, older adult, lifelong learning through the Emeritus Institute since 1976. So we have a very good decades-long run in serving older adults. Uh, we offer 30 different um, program areas or department areas within the Emeritus program. Those range from uh, fundamentals of investing, stocks and bonds management, our healthy aging courses, which include both lecture topics related to senior health, but also the practice of various exercises, um, particularly designed for an older adult population. Uh, as art you know, even demonstrates, uh, Tai Chi includes both lecture and um, the practice of it. So there is a mind and body connection there. With our art courses, um, we offer practically what a university level art graduate school would offer. The beginning fundamentals of sketching all the way through um, portrait painting in a variety of mediums. And for those individuals who really want to engage um, in hearty debate to talk through challenging topics related to even politics or philosophy or religion, we have courses designed for those as well. So our mission is uh, to promote lifelong learning by providing academically rigorous, mentally stimulating, socially engaging, and health improving courses for older adults. Yeah. And as it is, um, many community colleges across the country and specifically here in California have adopted similar missions. Yeah, yeah I, I was poking around the uh, catalog because uh, I take a number of Tai Chi classes, which are really great. Uh, they're done online, they're done through, uh, in, our, in our case, Zoom, but I know they're throughout the country. But you even have an acting, a basic acting class. I was trying to figure out how that would work uh, uh, on Zoom. But the teachers are so creative. I wonder, uh, I know that you can speak primarily about the Emeritus program, but the, uh, it seems that the standards for the uh, uh, staff throughout the country you're just not inviting somebody in because they used to do a little bit of Tai Chi practice or something else. Your standards for these uh, uh, instructors are pretty rigorous. Can you talk to that a bit? 
Absolutely. So in the California Community College system, um, the state mandates that there is at least a minimum qualification for every instructor who is hired as a faculty member at the college. So all of our instructors are um, adjunct faculty who meet the minimum standards. Typically, the minimum standards are a bachelor's degree. However, we want to maintain a really high academic level. So many of our faculty have either a master's and or a terminal degree uh, in their academic field. And so when we talk about academic rigor, we rely on the faculty members bringing in their content expertise, but that's only a part of it. As another minimum qualification, our instructors already have had to have had educational experience working with and or teaching in an older adult setting. And so we have very few green faculty members. We really want to ensure that our students are getting top-notch collegiate level education in this tuition-free lifelong learning program. Yeah, the, the, uh, the quality of the courses, I think, is impressive. But I, I want to go back to what you said about the, the goals. The goals for seniors is to keep us thinking, keep us active physically but mentally. Um, mm -hmm. And lifelong learning, it's a nice phrase, but lifelong learning is, I think, often overlooked is how important it is for you as you get older. You know, you never stop learning. I look at my friends who are sometimes taking classes somewhere or they're Googling, they're sitting Googling, they're becoming experts in something they never ever thought they would be, you know, mm -hmm. nothing related to their past careers. They just want to be, they like something and they want to learn about it. So lifelong learning is a really important goal, I think, for everybody as we get older. Yeah, exactly. There is a national movement called the Aging Friendly Universities and Colleges um, movement, essentially, or collaborative. Um, and Saddleback is actually uh, on the verge of joining this collaborative. Um, nationwide, there is setting a, it is setting a standard uh, for each of these different universities and colleges to become what is called an aging-friendly college or university. Those standards include having specific staff, budgets, programs designed either specifically for older adults or a commitment to establish intergenerational learning within courses, meaning that courses set aside specific seats for older adults or seniors to join their classes. What is important here, though, and this sometimes, um, there, this sometimes comes up, is that sometimes a senior or older adult in an intergenerational learning class, say you're sitting with the, the traditional age of 18 to 22 year old, um, the senior is the token, the, the older adult in the class, um, speaking on behalf of the older adult population. And it's really important to note that there is a, a sense of no, we are equals in this class. There is cross, plat, cross age learning. Um, and so when we talk about intergenerational learning, there is this component of I can learn from you, you can learn from me, you provide me a rich perspective on perhaps historical um, perspectives on the topic we're discussing, but also younger students. What is, how is this affecting you now? And so there's this rich dialogue that happens. And so aging friendly universities is, it's not a new concept, but because they're developing this standard across the nation, there really is a leveling up of what older adults lifelong learning looks like in the national education system. That's good. That's, I think that's an excellent trend. Also, I, I, as, a, uh, as a note, the reason why we we're so excited to have you come on is that Celebrating Act 2 is dedicated to basically people over 50 for the second mm -hmm. half of their life because we're living longer, healthier lives. And therefore, uh, unlike our parents and grandparents who might have uh, uh, departed this uh, uh, world in the in their uh, 60s, people living easily to their 80s and 90s, and just keeping the mind sharp, learning something new. I'm taking a, uh, uh, a brain health class, and it's, mm -hmm. it's stuff that's so, 
I mean, I don't understand most of it other than the results of, because we have a great teacher who basically brings it down to a lay person. But all the interactions, I knew they existed in the brain and the body. And so it helps me and informs me, uh, uh, and I'm sure it will help me with some decision making that I uh, have with the uh, health uh, things in the future. Uh, I know that uh, there are some people who take music classes and learn an instrument, mm -hmm. uh, even in the online world. So uh, you provide and your, your colleagues uh, uh, throughout the uh, United States are really providing an amazing service and uh, we thank you for it and, and thank you for explaining more of what's going yeah. on with these programs. Yeah, and we, we, we want to encourage uh, our audience, uh, everybody who watches this, to explore their local community college or extended learning program and, uh, you know, get out and get involved. And one last thought, Dan, one last thought. Mm -hmm. You mentioned intergenerational. I think there's something when you can have people of two different generations, that would be your generation and our generation, and we find common ground. The common ground in this place, in this case, is that all three of us have beards. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Well, even, I don't... And even to that point, as we see more, more individuals, say, like in their early 50s, joining the Emeritus Program or other lifelong learning programs, as you are said already, there are still individuals in their 80s and 90s in those courses. There's a generational gap of 30 or 40 years, even within that classroom itself. So it is important to note the, the nuance amongst the range of an older adult program as well, because the different perspectives, socially, culturally, historically, are innate in that classroom environment, even if someone is only over 50. <laughs> well, I love that. Only over 50. Yeah, um, we, we consider a, them a, to be young whippersnappers. Right, exactly. <laughs> what, what a wonderful perspective uh, you've given us, Dan. This is really valuable, I think, to a lot of people. I know a lot of people who don't even know community colleges exist or, you know, what they do or why they exist. So this is plus the emeritus program at Saddleback, but all of these senior focused programs around the country are are truly important and becoming more and more important every year so thank mm -hmm. you thank you very thank much thank you well it's a pleasure to chat with you both today and to promote lifelong learning in general it is something i am participating in uh, with going back to getting my doctorate but also at the same time for those who already have doctorates or master's degrees coming right. into our courses coming into other courses and developing those new neural pathways, developing critical thinking skills about topics that they may not have ever engaged with in their profession, that creates healthier, happier, longer living people. And that's what lifelong learning is all about. Amen. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.